outwork yourself because you have to outwork everybody else, but you also have to outwork yourself and, and just be ready because it's, it's, it's an uphill climb. It's a beautiful journey that you have to learn to experience while you're going through it. But if, if you're in for just the fame or just a check, like those hardships aren't going to feel worth it, man, because it's, it's, it's not what's in your heart. <laughs> What's up, Corey? I want to say in the building, but you're in your building. I'm in my building. Yeah, we are all in our buildings right We're now. All in our buildings. Well, thank you so much for uh, being a guest on this special quarantine edition of Lend Me Your Lens. If you tell me thank you again like we're strangers, I'm walking out of here. Uh, I, <laughs> well, I got I to be honest with, with our viewers. So I have known this talented uh, young man for going on six years now. I can't believe that. Uh, and I've gotten a chance to, you know, watch you grow and evolve and you're just having a, a kick ass moment that I know is just only going to continue. Uh, and that's what that's what we want to talk about today. So, again, just welcome. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. You know, I care about you with all my heart, bro. Straight up. Sure. So let's jump in. All right. So, you know, want to just let people know you that, you know, I'm sure we've got some folks that have been watching your career, but let's sort of go back to the beginning, right? So, you know, you were born in New York and, and moved to Miami, right, at, at a young age. And so tell me a little bit about your upbringing. Like, tell me who, who makes up the blessed family. Um, all right, so uh, dad was uh, born in Puerto Rico. Mom was born in Cuba. So uh, they met in New York, and that's that's how this family got started. I have to say, one of the things I'm most grateful for, I had really great parents, man. My dad was like a drill sergeant when it came to discipline, good grades and all that. And my mom was that same way disciplined, except um, just the loving, nurturing side. Like that lady, it's family over everything, just under God. And that that's just all she stands for, all she lives by. So it's like, we, we were like lower middle class, like anybody, like a lot of people. And um, times the lights were out, times like, you know, we were short on things. There's times we faced some really good hardships. But one thing I have to say, man, love was never absent. And that does a lot. That does a lot. And um, they really emphasized how strong it is to have like a spiritual grounding without forcing us. I remember there came a time when, I was having a little bit of conflicts with church and and it just didn't 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 feel right for a moment and uh, just the actual act of going to church not believing in God and they didn't they didn't push it man they set that structure every Sunday we were at church but um they let us grow I ended up being more spiritual than religious and um but man that grounding that they provided for us saved everything who were sort of like your major uh, role model or influences for you growing up <laughs> you know, I don't know, outside of my family, my three idols were Michael Jordan, Superman, and Rocky Balboa. Okay. I felt like between those three, I can encompass everything that I wanted to be as a human being. <laughs> okay. and, so, and so then from that, is that where this sort of love for artistry came from? Like, when did you know, like, you know what, like, I, I want to sort of be like these people that I admire. Writing, I think, started elementary school. And then in high school, um, my parents split when I was like 14, 15. We went over to Miami. And then um, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody at all. And, um, but in Miami, it started uh, the hip with the hip hop battles and freestyle sessions and ciphers. And that's like the same as if like when you're a good fighter, like people know you from your street fights. In music, like when you're out there battling, and taking people out and like winning competitions and you know, you're, you're building your street cred and that's how you start getting followers little by little, man, showing up to these open mics and just like and showing off, man. Okay. All right, so so tell me about this this new album, Bless. Can you oh. tell me like, sort of the, the inspiration behind this new album? It's, um, it was fueled by a lot of life experience, um, 
some pain that I grew really beautifully from. And I will say, um, I've always felt like I knew what I wanted to say, but this was the first official album where like, I completely knew what I wanted to stand for as, as a man, as a human being. And I was so clear in my message. I felt so clear about the message I wanted to put out. You know, it goes against a lot of trends in a lot of ways, but um, man, it felt good. And I felt like people that hear this, like I want them to feel empowered. I want them to, to appreciate art on a very high level and, and something skillfully crafted. <laughs> Now let's talk about, you know, you're out here, you're on the scene, you're performing, you're, you're growing, you're, you're following, but then you kind of like pivot a little bit and you decide that you want to pursue acting. So one of the roles that people uh, may know you by is when you were on East Most High. So <laughs> about like, how that role even came to be? How was that role even presented to you? Um, man, I, believe it or not, I got East Los High because I did a film for the Outfest Film Festival um, where I played um, a gay character, which was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life because, man, you really get to tap into the humanity of a perspective outside of your own. And, um, Man, you realize we're so the same, bro. We all have we all have obstacles, we all have hurdles, we all have like doubts within ourselves that we gotta work through. And it was it was a really, really, really growing experience, as a lot of like acting is. And the director of East Los High had seen me in that festival and seen me in that short and then requested to audition me uh via the casting director, which was uh Blanca at that time. And um, and that's how it started, man. They put me on a recurring on that show. It was really, really cool. Was, the story behind it was really awesome, man. I was grateful. Wow. You know, it was interesting to me. I was, as I was preparing for our interview today, um, I was just looking at, you know, what the representation of Latinos are in Hollywood right now. And, you know, speaking of your role as Blanca, you might say that that sort of prepared you for your role on Tyler Perry's Sisters. Right. So you got a chance to revisit playing an LGBTQ plus, uh, you know, a character. So can you talk a little bit about how that opportunity um, came to be as well? Yeah. So um, having, having that experience, of course, like it, it popped my cherry, I guess you could say. And um, and then, man, I've been I've been wanting to work with Tyler Perry for years. I auditioned for him before I ever worked with him, like three years before I was like 25 pages off book for two different characters. And um, I didn't get the project that time, but um, when I got to work on Sisters, one thing that people need to take notice also, when you're working on such a respectful set with such a respectful team that really wants you to do your best. Hey, 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 that is talking. <laughs> um, it, it, it was just at that point it, it was easy to make the connections to identify i was i'm so comfortable in my own skin that like like man it feels nice like dude, as a real human being like you know uh, applaud people like lenny kravitz like i love expressing femininity like i had women were a major part of my life my mom her two sisters my grandmother they were a big big part of my upbringing so it's like i had a lot of that feminine energy around me all the time and it's it's easy, like, it's, it's funny, because people are like, oh, they know him as the fighter, or they know him as the rapper, but um, at the same time, a lot of people from, like, my acting classes, and I know me personally, like, I'm, I'm that super sensitive, like, just really in tune kind, kind of guy, you know, it was, it, was, it was a great experience. So what would you say to other, you know, Latino actors, actresses that are out there, and, um, you know, they're, they're trying to find their way in, right? They're trying to find their opportunity, and you know, it's no secret that you are underrepresented in Hollywood, right? And so why would you say it's important for you to have embraced some of the roles that you've embraced? Why it's important? Um, I think first off, you have to get into this for the right reason. If this, you don't love this more than everything, if this isn't your calling, if, if you don't have this unrelenting passion for it, don't do it. 
because it's not all the glamour and glitz, man. There's a lot of rocks in your road on the way up here. And um, just if you do decide that this is your path, then then buckle down, outwork yourself because you have to outwork everybody else, but you also have to outwork yourself and, and just be ready because it's, it's, it's an uphill climb. It's a beautiful journey that you have to learn to experience while you're going through it. But if, if you're in for just the fame or just a check, like those hardships aren't going to feel worth it, man, because it's, it's, it's not what's in your heart. And, you know, what I love so much about your journey is that, you know, some people may say you've maybe taken risks, you know, that young actor taking on some of the roles you've taken but then you can also see on the other side of it how that sets you up for the next great opportunity so you're work, working on sisters right and then comes this opportunity to be a part of another one of tyler's show uh ruthless Ooh, so, you know, shout out to the ruthless family killing it right now i love these right? guys man right yeah. so can you i mean you know for folks who who haven't seen it yet you know Ruthless explores this this world of, of sex cult, right? And so can you talk about how, like, when that was being presented to you, again, how did you say, you know, or no, like, this is something I want to do. This is this is a story that I want to be a part of. Like, what was sort of behind your thinking and joining? Huh. First thing behind my thinking was that text and that phone call from Tyler Perry <laughs> about what he wanted me to audition for. <laughs> and listen... I've never been so impressed by a human being in my life. There's no way I'm not working with. Uh, secondly, I felt like that role on Sisters was such a layup because I know some people are still stuck in this archaic thought of like a man has to be this way, a girl has to be this way. So for a lot of those kind of people that know me or that know of me or whatever to see me playing that kind of a role, like it kind of like had to smash them because they know like what they would figure to be masculine and strong or whatever. And they realize that I'm, I'm, I'm still all those things. People in, in whatever dynamic they are, are still all those things. So um, it was like, it's like the sister's role was like the alley-oop. And then Ruthless was like, bang. Cause I'm like, oh, you remember me like this, right? I got something for you. <laughs> so it's a really, and as an artist, like to play on both ends of the spectrum, it's just a really, really beautiful transition. What keeps you going during some of the, the low times? Um, belief, man. Uh, again, back to what my parents sent me with. Faith, number one. Number one. There's so many times that I've played with the idea of giving up. Um, there's so many times that I just got frustrated with putting, like, putting my life on hold. Not being able to, like... I mean, here in LA, it was a little bit different. You know, you work a service job because you need your daytimes open. When I was in Miami, I, I worked in business, bro. We opened up an insurance office. Like, I was still doing all of my acting and all of my music and, and working like a professional job. And it was, it was nuts. It was nuts because you, you, you go to school 7.30 to 3, then you work 3.30 to 10, then you're in the studio 11 to 4 in the morning and rinse, repeat. You're sleeping three hours. And if... If you don't love it that much, there's no way you're getting up with three hours of sleep and being your best passionate self. So, um, I mean, faith, 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 man. I'm telling you right now, faith was my biggest, biggest thing. If I didn't have that spiritual grounding where I could just close my eyes and take a deep breath and ground myself and know that there's something bigger than me and something stronger than me, there's no way, there's absolutely no way I would have handled all of this. Even, dude, I... I Moving to LA to continue my career meant leaving my job, leaving my business, being unemployed. I never worked in a restaurant in my life, so I didn't have any referrals. I knew one person in the entire city, and I was living on a sofa. I rented a sofa from a studio. Not the studio, the sofa. So, I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for, for faith, number one, the, I, I would have failed. And then passion goes with that. Love goes with that because love has to fuel everything. And, um, and, and you got to want to succeed, man. I feel very strongly about the message that I have to give out to people. And um, I just felt like if I didn't get there, I'm dishonoring this gift. And you don't want to make God upset, man. <laughs> Look what's happening. That's real. Let's learn. What piece of advice would you give some of those artists right now? You know, you're, you're blessed. Anthony Bless is blessed. <laughs> a 
couple of shows that are on right now that people can access for sure uh, while we're in this quarantine. But what, what piece of advice would you give any artists right now to just give them a bit of encouragement? Um, believe in yourself. You're going to hear no 1,000 times for all different reasons. People are insecure. People don't believe in you. The stakes are too high. You have to be able to take 1 billion no's and the one yes that you tell yourself has to be enough to fuel you to, to get through that day. Also, um, don't expect it's going to fall on your lap. Go out and earn it. Go out and earn it and then be proud of earning it, man, because nothing feels better than to get to a place and know that you put in the work to get there. Somebody didn't give it to you. Um, and be passionate. Be extraordinary. Be extraordinary. Nobody wants normal. Nobody wants you to be the next this person. You got to be the first you because there's only one unique you. That's the only way that you can win. If you try to be somebody else, like there's already somebody else being that. You got to be you. I mean, that, that's, that's where I put it. I love it. I love it. All right, man. I could have said it better myself. So, so how can people stay, you know, connected to you, you know, watch your career as it continues to evolve? Tell people where they can find you. Thank you. Uh, follow me on I am Anthony Bless. I'm on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, please tune in to Ruthless. Ruthless comes out every Thursday. The show is crazy. Tyler Perry is a crazy mad scientist, genius. He's he's Dr. Manhattan in the flesh, the real life Dr. Manhattan. I call him the template. Well, we appreciate you, Anthony, and uh, Godspeed to you. And we look forward to continue watching you grow and shine, man. Corey, always a pleasure, my man. Always a pleasure. You know, you got me in your corner as well, man. I appreciate you. Of course, man. God bless. Peace and love, brother.